Hi, I'm Otter Bravado. I have an interesting thing going on for you right now. A couple of updates for you. Uh, my gas mod is actually down a little instead of up like I thought since uh, the vacuum leak fix. Uh, I theorize it's because my long-term fuel trims are really slow to change on this car. The short-term fuel trim can correct when it's in closed loop, but outside of closed loop, it's still remembering what it should do however it figures that out. Uh, the short-term fuel trim when the O2 sensor comes alive corrects it, of course. It, it gets it really close to zero almost all the time. But it just hasn't seemed to manage to, to figure that out. But regardless, uh, the video today is about water decarbonization. I've been having some rich conditions going on and that can build up carbon a little faster and that can make the temperatures of each combustion chamber be a little bit different. I had it so bad once that I was I had it so bad once that I had seven degrees C hotter on one combustion chamber than the others. Um, I had 109 horsepower after a water decarbonization I had 115. Granted I can't afford to do dynos runs all the time this is information that's just based upon the torque app. But I, since I see really consistent data out of it, I'm going to go right out there and say it's still a useful tool to see what's going on. Okay, so after my drive, temperatures are pretty uneven. I've got uh, 57, 54, 56, 69. These temperatures are actually worse than that when I first got back, but uh, I lost that video. Uh, my new data card keeps corrupting. It's really frustrating to record everything three times. <laughs> but I've got 56, 50, kind of me on the same spot, inch one, 57, 54, 56, 59. This one was sometimes as much as 10 degrees hotter than the other ones. Uh, I've already been doing some water decarbonization, so it's improved. I hope I don't keep losing video so I have proof of what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm back from driving around a little bit. 57 degrees, 54, 56 and a half, 60. There's your differential. I have to drive around, otherwise everything looks pretty even. There you go. Okay, so from your own benefit. All right, so you got to choose a good site for water decarbonization. Personally, I choose here because it's after the map. Because if you want to go through here, for example, it'll squirt right onto the map. So for you uh, Chevy Prism owners that still have things stuck, the map normally goes in right here. So this might be an okay place to get some, some fluid in there, but still really, you can still choose this guy right here, because even if you have a stock system, that keeps you well away from the map, because you don't want to get the map wet, uh, you, you'll cause problems, you'll end up having to get a new one. Okay guys, I can't emphasize enough that my engine seems to be running a lot better. Um, partly because of that idle reeler and I never let it do, because I don't sit there and idle since I'm an MPG nut. But while you're doing water decarbonization, you, you've got to let your stuff happen. got to let things out. So I've got negative 50, uh, 53 degrees C. 6 degrees C, 59 degrees C, right on, 52, well, that's 63, no, 67, I have to re-edit this one, it's hard to get the shot, 63, 60, Fifty-three, 
360. While I was uploading video, I was seeing this and this together at 48. Now we've got a, a big uh, difference here. We got 59, 60, 59. Yeah, they're about the same. They're just hotter because I've been sitting here longer. But this one is really determined to stay hot. Hey, it's temperature's finally down too. Wow. Okay, things are really evening up. Now, for a control, there's a possibility that I have another malfunction. It may be that I've, I've seen it before, earlier on, that when I was idling, temperatures even out when I drove, I actually saw the real circumstance. So, I'm not sure the contaminated my data now was simply sitting here to idle. So, we'll go for a drive and we'll check the temperatures again to see if that was a fix for any other question. Alright guys, so I have shown you where to put it in. Forgive me, I'm not going to... Uh, put my engine through anymore when it's already cleaned out. I shot video of cleaning it again and again. Uh, unfortunately, I lost that. So what we've got is a sprayer that can do a, a nice spray. You know, you want a nice spray out of it. You don't want it to dribble in there or pour it in there. I just think it's it's a safer way to go. The first time I did this, I used just a few ounces of water and got all the results I needed. This last time, man, having a new O2 sensor for a year that ran things too rich, I think it took a lot more cleaning to get things uh, in a better situation because literally I used like 20 ounces of water instead of a few ounces. A little bit of extra fun and joy for you. Is Fortech Macaluco believes uh, that water decarbonization might be the only way to deal with the EcoBoost problem other than re entirely removing the cylinder head and replacing it. Ford doesn't recommend any cleaners going through because it would damage the turbo. I have an interest in that because I'm interested in getting EcoBoost. Uh, so this is a turbo safe option as well. Uh, you put some a few sprays in and you can increase the RPMs a little bit to help the engine clear its throat and uh, process it through. Um, I've gotten to know my engine very well that I actually can run more than a few sprays but unless you really know what your engine can handle don't be overdoing it okay you gotta do this safe. Okay, to help you with a couple of consequences that uh, might happen for your water decarbonization. The first time I did this, my oil got a whole lot dirtier. This time, it's not so bad. I mean, I'm due for an oil change, 5,000 miles. I mean, that stuff is rated for 15,000 miles, but all that got me is another 1,000 miles of clean, if you ask me. I'm, I, I'm not, I don't believe in real long oil change intervals. But still, that's looking really, really clean. Last time... I had to change my oil about a thousand miles early, about four thousand miles because things just looked so dirty. Uh, the other con consequence I had last time that I didn't detect this time is I take the time with the heavy metal tool that makes it easy to reach my ear and I listen to each of my spark plug coils and hear if they all sound the same. If something sounds duller that means the gap's probably a little wider, a little bit later. If it's something sounds brighter, or almost like it's interrupting something, that means the spark plug might be too tight and uh, causing an event that's slightly early. So I was hearing slightly early events on a cylinder or so, and it turned out they were 42,000 instead of, of 44 thousandths of an inch for spark plug gap. Yeah. Call me crazy, but I can actually, I've worked with this engine so much, I can actually hear spark plug gap. So that's number one on your consequences. So I took a long drive, mostly let my uh, video process. Really didn't need to drive it that far. It's kind of silly, really. Um, but I started to realize just how much better the car was running. It was 
unbelievable. Just like it was a year ago when um, my symptoms were worse. I mean, lately when I've checked my fuel trims, I've thought, or excuse me, not my fuel trims, but my temperatures on each individual intake runner. Um, the temperatures were were very similar. I was thinking I really didn't need to do water decarbonization except to show all of you the, the trick. But then I let it run some more and I'm seeing that number one cylinder on the left side run so much hotter, as much as 10 degrees C hotter. I'm sorry I lost that footage. Uh, normally we're seeing less differences than that. But really the carbon buildup wasn't allowing the valves to close quite as much or maybe I dropped the actual compression pressure a little bit because I cleared cleared it out. I mean Chris Fix is a good example of who to go to if you want to look at what different cleaners do just a little bit. They don't do very much. Uh, he, he often didn't even notice much of a difference or a lot, sometimes no difference. If you didn't have a camera down into the combustion chamber and looking at that cylinder, he wouldn't even have noticed a difference. Water decarbonization immediately noticed a difference. It feels so much smoother. Uh, the laser temperature gauge is a different twist on showing how it actually does make a difference. So I hope you liked the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember, Get out there and work on something.